There are still several thousand people camped out under a bridge in Del Rio. The group of migrants continuing to wait for be, wait to be processed. The latest on the effort to get a handle on the situation coming up. This great weather continues for another few days before some rain chances kick in. We'll break down the 7-day forecast coming up. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. New at noon, we are waiting for information on a body found in Comal County late last night. The Comal County Sheriff's Office says the body is that of a homicide victim out of San Antonio and that San Antonio police are investigating it. Comal County Sheriff's deputies and San Antonio police sent to where that body was found. It was located off of Interstate 35 between New Braunfels and San Marcos at around 1030 last night. Now, earlier in the week, police arrested 29 year old Francisco Garcia Ventura charged him with tampering with evidence after he allegedly told his girlfriend's family that he had beaten the girlfriend to death and dumped her body somewhere in San Marcos. However, San Antonio police have not said if this body found is the northern Como County uh, body that was connected to that case. Now, Ventura's girlfriend, identified by her family as Crystal Garcia, was last seen on September 17th. She has four kids that are waiting for her and they want to see her. They want her home. Police say Ventura was about to board a bus for Mexico City when he was arrested. And just this morning, there's a new charge evading arrest that was added to Ventura's case. Now to the latest on the situation at the border. Governor Greg Abbott has ordered a steel wall of vehicles to help stop the surge of migrants. As ABC's Kenneth Moten reports, this comes as the Biden administration says it will ramp up deportations. A fleet of state vehicles being used to deter migrants from illegally crossing into Texas. We've seen a lot of manpower here to try to get control of this border and humanitarian crisis. New images of that migrant camp under the Del Rio Bridge, a significant decrease, but the scene still heartbreaking. Overnight, new numbers from the Department of Homeland Security saying since Sunday, more than 1,400 migrants have been flown back to Haiti on a dozen flights. 3,200 taken into custody, but still in the U.S. preparing to be deported or placed into removal proceedings while they seek asylum. Less than 5,000 migrants, mostly Haitian, remain in this encampment, down from roughly 14,000 over the weekend. The faces of those desperate for asylum here in the U.S., the children seen on the shoulders of their parents as they cross the dangerous Rio Grande. These images even have some Democrats demanding the Biden administration stop the mass deportations and get a better handle on this crisis. In Del Rio, this is that so-called still barrier I was talking about. The governor of Texas ordering state troopers to line up vehicles right there on the border. And some mounted Border Patrol agents are on administrative duties while DHS investigates this disturbing encounter with migrants. Hundreds of migrants have gone back across the river into Mexico and set up camp in different cities like Monterey. Mexico feeling that strain, but right now the country is not deporting those migrants, instead allowing them to get their paperwork together to seek asylum there. Meanwhile, DHS says those deportation flights from the U.S. to Haiti will continue. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, Del Rio, Texas. This noon, San Antonio police still looking for a missing teen. Officers say the 15 year old girl was last seen on the southeast side. Now, according to police, Destiny De La Rosa is 5'2". She has brown hair and brown eyes. This is her picture. Before she disappeared, she was seen in the 200 block of Wall Street. That's near East South Cross in I-37. She was wearing a pink top, blue jeans, and a Michael Kors belt. If you have seen her or you know where police can find her, call the San Antonio Police Department's Missing Persons Unit. That phone number, it's on your screen right now. It is 210-207-7660. Police also want to find this guy. They say he's accused of robbing a store last month on the southeast side. According to officers, back on August 22nd, this person walked into a metro by T-Mobile store in the 2900 block of Goliad Road. That's near Southeast Military Drive. Police say the man pointed an unknown object toward the employee behind the register and then demanded money. He ran off with the cash. If you can help police with this investigation, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Just one day after the FDA authorized Pfizer booster shots for millions of at-risk Americans, today the CDC and its advisory panel will have its say on who falls in that category. As ABC's Faith of Ube reports, this means those who qualify could begin getting their shots by the end of the week. 
Right now, scientists on a CDC advisory panel debating which Americans can get a third shot of Pfizer's COVID vaccine. The FDA deciding late Wednesday the shots can be administered to older Americans and those at high risk of getting the virus. That includes healthcare workers, teachers, daycare staff, grocery store employees, and people in homeless shelters and prisons. The CDC now working out a more detailed recommendation. Hopefully, Director Walensky will come out on Friday and give those final recommendations about who is at high risk and who exactly should be getting these booster shots, including those above the age of 65. For everyone else, we just need more data. People need to wait. So far, the only people that have received booster shots are those with compromised immune systems who received the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines. An estimated 2 million people who qualify have already gotten a booster, including Allison Rogers, who has Crohn's disease. If you've already gotten the second one, um, the third one is kind of a breeze. I got it on a Saturday and by Monday I was back at work. While the booster shot debate continues, fewer and fewer Americans are open to getting vaccinated. The White House estimates 71 million Americans who are eligible still haven't gotten the shot. Data also shows COVID patients are dying at a significantly higher rate in states with low vaccination rates. In Montana, Billings Clinic administrators say their ICUs are running at 150 to 175 percent capacity. So we have ICU patients outside of our intensive care unit in other areas of our hospital. We're used to dealing with death, but death in younger people um, who have children, it's just, it's, it's incredibly hard on our staff. And requests from Johnson & Johnson and Moderna to offer booster shots to the larger population are still pending. The FDA could make a decision within the next few weeks. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Today, right now, the big give is underway and generous folks from all around our community are donating to local nonprofits. Let's take a look at the progress so far from the Big Give website. The organization behind the Big Give saying the event is already a big success. We're pacing well ahead of last year, so we're excited. We've got over 400 nonprofits that are participating this year, so there's a lot of opportunity for donors to go on to thebiggive.org, search whatever nonprofits they want to look for and potentially find those and donate directly to them. Now, if you go to that website, you'll see the total at the top of the web page. The Nonprofit Council says events like this are important because it makes it easy for donors to support various organizations. <laughs> According to the Nonprofit Council, the pandemic has affected many nonprofits fundraising efforts since many have not been able to do in-person events. And another chance for you to give back coming up this Saturday morning. It's the annual Head for the Cure 5K Run and Walk. The event supports brain cancer research. The cause is something that we support here at KSAT. It's a way for us to honor our former news director, Jim Boyle. He lost his battle with brain cancer back in 2014. This year's Head for the Cure event kicks off bright and early Saturday morning at Providence High School. If you'd like some more information on how you can participate or donate, all you got to do is head to the website KSAT.com. As more industries recover after getting shut down during the pandemic, the arts seeing a comeback. In fact, you can catch some live theater this weekend. We have a preview of the first show to return to the Majestic. Still ahead. Texas head coach is talking Texas Tech and how they are more than just a passing team these days as they get ready to do battle Saturday in Austin. Larry Mirrors with the words of the head coach of Texas coming up. The entertainment lineup for next year's rodeo. Just got an update. We've got it. The artists just added to the list after the break. New this noon, a couple more reasons to get excited about the rodeo this season, even though it's still several months away. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo is now going to feature performances by Midland and Lady A. That's in addition to several entertainment numbers that were already announced. That list includes Tanya Tucker. Brad Paisley, Tim McGraw, Sticks, can't wait, and Three Doors Down. The rodeo kicks off February 10th, runs through the 27th. You can get tickets at sarodeo.com or the Ticketmaster website. Last week, many New York Broadway shows like The Lion King and Hamilton reopened for the first time since shutting down more than a year ago because of the pandemic. And this week, San Antonio welcoming you back its first Broadway show with the national tour of My Fair Lady. RJ Marquez visited the Majestic Theater to see how the cast and crew are preparing.
It is a big week out here at the Majestic Theater in downtown San Antonio. The Majestic is set to host My Fair Lady. This is the first time that a national Broadway tour has made its way to San Antonio since the pandemic started. We talked to some of the actors and the staff that make the show go. My Fair Lady is one of those uh, classic American musicals from 1956 uh, by Lerner and Lowe. And it just has incredible music. Our production, the, the set is incredible. The, the costumes are beautiful. Um, if this huge orchestra, sweeping, sweeping orchestral melodies, and the cast is just fantastic. To get back out there and do what we love to do with the support of everybody backstage and at the, at the front of the house and, and know that we're all getting back to work, and to, to look out at the audience and see uh, hundreds or thousands of, of people sitting out there, um, yeah, there's, there's just no better feeling in the world right now. We're so excited to have you know Broadway back in the theater. It's been a long, year and a half without a Broadway season so we're excited to have you know butts and seats again and you know just the excitement you know of everything on stage we want to make sure that everybody knows wear your mask um, come in and just be excited to you know to see the show you can always look at our website for any updates to our protocols at majesticempire.com my fair lady will be playing through Sunday right here at the majestic theater for more information head out to ksat.com RG Marcus ksat home news it is time to pull out that bicycle and enjoy some nice weather and even more so because Ciclovia is back this weekend. And this year they're welcoming people in person once again. You can join the fun on Sunday along the Mission Reach route. There's going to be exercise classes, biking and even live music. Plus, there are going to be activities at Roosevelt Park and Confluence Park. Organizers of the event hope people will come out and enjoy the outdoors. Community was introduced to biking, to running, to walking during COVID, and I think that momentum continues to roll with us. So we encourage all those families that picked up these great habits during COVID to come and explore your own community, your own city. Ciclovia is from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Wearing a mask is encouraged. For more information, head to kset.com. If you went outside around 7.30 this morning, it was downright chilly like 55 degrees there were some 40s in the hill country oh my it was, <laughs> I, was I had a jacket on incredible love it it's still pretty nice out there right now although things are warming up pretty quickly because we have a lot of dry air in place it'll turn into a, a nice day the aquifer is down again down to 657.7 we do need some rain and looking at the pollen count another long list today ragweed leads the way though and we'll be in ragweed season until we see our first freeze so another couple months of ragweed issues. Uh, we're going to take a look at the drop monitor plus our next chance for rain coming up. Cool in the morning and you know if you live out in the hill country even in San Antonio you can probably see some but now we're getting into the time where the sunsets are absolutely yes. fantastic. To look. And the moon. Yeah right. Yeah. You can walk around outside and not need a flashlight. Very nice weather. Or street light. Our compliments awesome. to the chef. Oh, well, I'm not going to take credit for this go around, <laughs> but it has been just fantastic. It's a great time to go out to the uh, the pumpkin patches. It's starting to show up. Good time for that. Uh, great stretch of weather here through about Sunday. Then we start to see some changes. There's a look at the lows this morning. We got down to 44 in Kerrville, 45 Bernie Stage, 55 in New Braunfels, 56 here in town. Even Hondo down to 50 this morning. And uh, Del Rio, 63, 52 Eagle Pass, 52 in Gonzales. This was the coolest morning we've seen here in San Antonio since April 24th, just to give you some perspective. And as we look outside right now, the skies are as blue as they can be. 80 degrees, 84 Stenson, 78 Kelly, 78 at Randolph. And there are some very, very light winds. You're not going to find much wind today, though. 81 in Hondo already, 78 Randolph, 81 in New Braunfels, 76 Canyon Lake, as we often talk about here. When you have dry air, you're going to get the big swings in temperature. So, yes, it starts off chilly, but by the afternoon, warms up pretty nicely. And we'll be in the upper 80s, I think, before it's all said and done. 86 already in Catula, 82 Carrizo Springs. You're at 81 in New Braunfels at this hour. Dew points, they stay low. We're going to have really dry air today. Comes up a little bit this weekend, but not noticeably. It's not until Monday and Tuesday where you'll start to feel the humidity a little bit more. And hopefully that leads to, leads to some showers and storms. It's looking that way as we get a storm system in here by early next week. Here's forecast for today. 84 by 2 o'clock, 88 by 5 o'clock, 81, 7 o'clock. Clear skies. If you're heading out to the football games tonight, it is great football weather. Temperatures will be in the 70s, even 60s by the time. 
the football games are winding down. There's a look at the satellite picture and you'll notice that there is zero cloud cover across the state of Texas. So everyone here is seeing perfectly sunny skies today. Of course, the problem with that is we're starting to creep back into a drought situation. This was last week. About 3% of the state was in drought. A few places there in North Texas, one or two here in our area. And we're just starting to see that increase a little bit. This is today's drought monitor. A week later, now 6% of the state is in drought, which isn't all that bad, but we're headed in the wrong direction. And unless we get some rain in here, you're going to start to see drought picking back up. We have one little area here just east of Eagle Pass that is starting to show some drought in some places. Showing abnormally dry here, Catula over to Three Rivers. We'll keep you posted. Some rain would be good. And as you look at rainfall over the last five months, we were doing really well in May. June was okay. July was pretty good to us. But then August came along. We had 1.28. And then here in September, we've only picked up about 36 hundredths of an inch. So uh, we, we've got to get some rain back in here. And as we look at the forecast, there is that chance, as I mentioned, early next week. So we got a cutoff low, meaning it's cut off from the jet stream out here by Saturday. Saturday and Sunday still look great, by the way. But it starts to get uh, pushed to the east by Monday, close enough to bring moisture back into play. And then by, I think, Tuesday and Wednesday, we have a decent chance for showers and storms around the area. This model overdoes it a little bit. It's not going to be this widespread. But some of those pop-up showers and storms seem possible Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. That should also bring temperatures down a little bit. Here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. So low humidity next couple days, 89 Friday. We start off at 59 tomorrow morning and then 60s in the mornings for Saturday and Sunday and then close to 90 by the afternoon. By Monday, 90, 20% chance of rain will slip back down into the 80s. As long as we can get, can get some clouds and rain in here, the 40% chance both Tuesday and Wednesday, guys. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. I know we've got uh, high school coming up, and I know we've got other, but the big one is Saturday at 11 a.m. I'm sorry. I'm just. I, I know you're going to be planting it in front of your television set it. Saturday, 11, Texas Tech. Don't call Texas, me. I don't know. text me. Yep. Don't, don't email me. Nothing. Yeah, Sears is just going to be sit there, tunnel vision <laughs> on the football game. Hey, also on Saturday, we have UTSA at Memphis. The Roadrunners are the underdogs, and they don't mind. And David. Uh -huh. Texas Tech is well aware the Horns have a touchdown machine and Casey Thompson coming up. Mm. Yeah, I think every week's a benchmark because y'all are going to evaluate us and we're going to evaluate us and then we're going to see what we did well and try to um, expand on it and we're going to see where, where we struggled and we're going to try to fix it. Matt Wells and his Texas Tech Red Raiders are ready to face the Texas Longhorns in another benchmark game in big board sports. The UTSA Roadrunners will be looking for their first 4-0 start since 2012 when they travel to Memphis to take on the undefeated Tigers. Going into this game, the stats are fairly even. UTSA averages almost 40 points a game, while the Tigers sit at nearly 43 per contest. So the passing department about the same, 297 to 291. In the rushing department, the Tigers have the better numbers, averaging 224 yards per game compared to the Roadrunners 166. So that's where UTSA's defense, ranked 10th in the nation, will be tested going into this battle of unbeatens as three-point underdogs. I love being an underdog, so if it was 20, three, four, it don't really matter to me. I like being an underdog, so. It just, it may give me a boost. A lot of people probably think it's like we ain't met nobody um, that was that good or it's a fluke, but you know, we, we just gotta prove, prove them wrong. Kickoff in Memphis is set for 2.30 p.m. and it will be seen nationally televised on ESPNU. Texas Longhorns open play in the Big 12 this Saturday when they face the undefeated Texas Tech Red Raiders. The Horns haven't won a Big 12 title since back in 2009 when then head coach Mac Brown led his team to the national championship game. Now, when you take a look at the stats, once again, fairly even until you get to yards allowed. Longhorns are allowing 367 yards per game this season, 184 per on the ground. It has not gone unnoticed by UT head coach Steve Sarkeesian. When you think of Tech, you think Air Raid, uh, you know, and Coach Leach and all the, the good work he did there, these guys will run the ball, and, and they'll run it right at you. Uh, they've got a physical tight end uh, who inserts, and they run all the slider runs and things like that, uh, and two big physical backs that, uh, 
you know, I, you know, we got to do a really good job of tackling in this game defensively. We've got to do a really good job of getting multiple hats to the ball, um, you know, and not relying on one guy to get these two guys down. On the flip side, Tech head coach Matt Wells knows Horns quarterback Casey Thompson can produce touchdowns. He has nine total touchdowns in three plus games, dating back to the Alamo Bowl last year when he had four through the air. Certainly, I've gone back and looked since the Alamo Bowl and watched all of his series since he's played in the last, whatever, three games plus the Alamo Bowl. Um, and it's a very, very high percentage of scores. Uh, and a lot of those are touchdowns. So I think that's the number one thing of playing quarterback is to make the other 10 guys around you that much better. And so my, my guess is that you know, whether it's his play or in the huddle or his demeanor, he inspires his teammates. The Horns will be seven and a half point favorites when they kick off 11 a.m. in Royal Memorial Stadium on Saturday with Texas Tech. And you can see that game live right here on KSAT 12 and 12. David, what's uh, my question to you is what's your snack for the game? What do you have to have? What do you have to eat? I'm going to have my wife's going to make like a like a big exotic dip with some chips and then she's going to leave the room. <laughs> Not the house. <laughs> well, you might leave the house. I don't know. Just, I'll see you later. Doesn't want to hear David yelling? No, not at all. <laughs> As lawmakers in Washington clash on raising the federal debt limit, a new report explains what could happen if there's no action. How these decisions could impact your bottom line coming up in the next half hour. And a volcano on a Spanish island still wreaking havoc at that community. And it's not just the flowing lava that's causing concern. Details coming up after the break. We want to return to that desperate situation in the Canary Islands, an unrelenting volcano. It is exploding still for yet another day. 1800 degree lava on its way into the sea, and that is threatening homes and businesses along the way. As ABC's James Longman reports from La Palmas with more. This volcano is still as angry as ever. Multiple explosions all through the night. Take a look, that is the ash pumping out into the sky. It is absolutely everywhere. And here behind me, that is what people are so worried about. This river of lava streaming down through the landscape right next to people's homes. Of course, it's already gone through about 450 buildings and that's why firefighters are working to divert it away from where people live. Uh, but it's very difficult to do that. This is volcanic rock they're trying to dig down into. They're digging trenches, they're building walls of earth, trying to snake that lava through. It is very, very tough going. Another big risk here is all this ash. Much of it is landing on people's rooftops and that causes a risk of collapse. So all kinds of things for the people of La Palma to be concerned about. That is why the King of Spain has made his way here today as well as the Prime Minister. This is very much a national tragedy. James Longman, ABC News in the Canary Islands. Back here in the States, a witness says she saw Gabby Petito and her boyfriend at a restaurant three days after she was last seen. A woman claims that she saw Petito and her boyfriend, Brian Landry, at a restaurant in Wyoming. The restaurant also confirms the couple was there, but authorities had previously believed the last time Petito was seen alive was three days earlier in Utah. Meanwhile, the search for Petito's boyfriend continues. Investigators have now brought in underwater dive teams to a Florida nature reserve where authorities believe he is hiding. Looking outside with live cam has changed dramatically from this morning, but you wouldn't know it if you're just looking out the window. Oof. No, I mean, it has warmed up some, but get outside. I mean, this is some great weather. I'm not telling you what to do, but uh, it, it's OK. Tell us <laughs> enjoy. Enjoy today because it is fantastic out there. We'll see another great morning tomorrow, too. I want to tell you, though, a little bit about the air quality. There is an ozone action day today because you know, typically when we see these fronts, the air can get a little bit stagnant behind them. And so it can become unhealthy for those who are sensitive to ozone, those with asthma and things like that. So just something to keep in mind uh, today. As we look at the temperatures, 76 Canyon Lake, 81 Hondo, 85 Divine, 83 Pleasanton, 83 in Gonzales, 80 right now in Uvalde. Most places are seeing clear skies and we'll continue to see that into this evening. Your football forecast, if you're going out to any of the football games tonight, Perfect weather. Some of the best uh, weather we've seen for Friday night football. 81 to kick off. It'll be 74 halftime. By the time the game winds down, could be in the 60s. Sunset will be around 729. Good looking weekend coming up too. 
We'll have more on that here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you so much, Justin. Another sign that the coronavirus Delta variant still disrupting the job market's recovery. More people are applying for unemployment aid. The number of Americans submitting applications rose again last week for a second straight week. The report from the Labor Department shows that jobless claims rose to 351,000. That's an increase of 16,000. Overall, unemployment and applications have tumbled since topping 900,000 earlier this year, reflecting the economy's reopening after the pandemic recession. But those numbers are still high. Before the pandemic tore through the economy in March 2020, they generally numbered about 220,000 a week. It is a critical week to avoid a government shutdown at the end of the month and increase the borrowing limit. But Republicans say they won't help raise the federal debt limit. This means the U.S. could default on its debt for the first time ever and set off a domino effect of negative impacts on the economy. Here's a closer look at how this debt ceiling showdown could impact you directly. A showdown in Washington with a potential direct impact on your bottom line. It will be American families who suffer most. They will not get Senate Republicans help with raising the debt limit. Democrats pushing to raise the federal debt ceiling are in the middle of a standoff with Republicans. A new report from Moody's Analytics paints a picture of what could happen if lawmakers don't take action. It would create a lot of snowballing effects throughout the economy. We estimate that the unemployment rate would surge to 9%. Six million jobs uh, would be lost. The debt limit is the maximum the federal government is allowed to borrow to pay for last year's bills. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen sent an open letter to Congress to urge them to raise that borrowing limit. And in a Wall Street Journal op-ed, she claimed if it doesn't happen, nearly 50 million seniors could stop receiving Social Security checks for a time. U.S. troops could go unpaid. Millions of families who rely on the monthly child tax credit could see delays, and it could have a lasting impact on interest rates. If that happens, you would pay more for mortgage payments, car loans, and credit card bills. It'll come as a, a very negative surprise to households. And they're in, in order to make up for this loss, sudden loss of income, they're going to have to pull back on spending. Now, according to the U.S. Treasury, the U.S. currently has nearly $29 trillion in debt. Roughly $8 trillion of that is from the Trump era, including the early COVID stimulus plans. And that's what Congress is faced with paying for right now. With all that debt, Republicans do not want to raise the debt ceiling because the Democrats want to spend another $7 trillion. So Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said if the Democrats want to raise the debt limit, they should just do it themselves. Still coming up, Cowboys sensation Mike Parsons talks versatility. Liver Ramirez has that coming up in sports. An actor stars almost solo in a new film. Why he says the audience may have to use their imaginations while they watch this one. There's a new film premiering tomorrow at the box office and it relies heavily on just one actor. Jake Gyllenhaal. He shares the screen with voices on the other end of the phone in The Guilty. CNN's Rick Damagella has a preview for it. 911, this is emergency operator 625. I've just erupted. Okay, sir, I need to know where you are. Last name? Is this the fire department? No, ma'am, you've reached 911, but I can connect you to oh, fire. No. Just hold the I line. Can... Jake Gyllenhaal portrays a 911 operator in The Guilty. I just want to talk to you. Okay, I'm hanging I'm up. Just stop for a drive, sweetie, okay? Is there someone with you? With several off-screen and just a handful of on-screen co-stars, Gyllenhaal is in the majority of shots of the film. To me, it's a movie about listening, honestly. And though the movie plays on me uh, for a lot of it and on my face, I, I think inevitably, pretty early on, the audience's imagination should switch on. And the sounds, this is a heavy sound movie, starts to play in their own mind and you start to picture what he's picturing and what he's going through and and how he can see things all movies are challenging right just it, to make a movie is challenging but this one had a lot of uh particular things like the height of covid and all sorts of things going on as far as the uh keeping it intense and the thriller of it all because it is about listening and every little thing you say gives something away there is a scared little girl in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Looking outside with live cam, beautiful day. I don't even see one cloud. Not one. In fact, uh, there's not even 
cloud cover anywhere in the state of Texas. You got to go outside of Texas. Hey, the beautiful blue skies, 80 degrees so far today. The average is 88. We should be right about average this afternoon, but with some very dry air. 56 was the low this morning. That's about 12 degrees below average. Not near the record, though. 49 set back in 1999. And the record high is 99 set back in 1920. Thankfully, we will be nowhere near that. It's more great weather as we head into the weekend before rain chances show up. A look at your seven day forecast is coming up. This Hispanic Heritage Moment is brought to you by Taco Cabana. While not a major holiday in Mexico and often confused with Mexico's Day of Independence, Cinco de Mayo is celebrated across the United States and especially in Texas because of one man, General Ignacio Zaragoza. Zaragoza, a native of Goliad, Texas, helped lead the charge at the Battle of Puebla and a victory over the French Army during the Franco-Mexican War on the 5th of May, 1862. The victory helped boost the morale of the Mexican Army and the people with a sense of national pride and patriotism. But General Zaragoza didn't enjoy his victory for very long. Only four months after the Battle of Puebla, he died of typhoid fever at the age of 33. The first celebrations of Cinco de Mayo said to have taken place in California. Today, Ignacio Zaragoza is remembered as a symbol of Texas valor. And with deep ties to Mexico, Cinco de Mayo has become part of Texas culture. All right, so this weekend we got the walk Saturday morning right over here in Providence. Then the it's Texas the Tech game. And then Tech, well, yeah, Texas Tech. And the LSU game. And the LSU game, the A&M game. But, but I was thinking stuff outside because after the Tech game, I want to go outside because, like, we got sick. Well, you could have, you're going to want to go outside and get some fresh air just in case you don't win. I want to see all those people riding bicycles because, you know. At the Ciclovia. At the Ciclovia. Yeah. Yeah, that's going on, too. Give me some big crowds, I think, this weekend, no matter where yeah. you go outside. Uh, because the weather will be so, uh, so nice. Ooh, it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, it will be. And, you know, we got to look at the tropics real quick. We've got a new named tropical storm out there. I'll tell you, though, as we get into October, it tends to be really hard for tropical systems to make their way into Texas because we start getting these fronts and it kind of deflects everything and pushes everything away. It's not to say we couldn't get tropical activity, but it starts to wind down. There still is tropical activity out over the Atlantic. It just doesn't necessarily make its way into Texas. And there's nothing that uh, looks like it's headed toward Texas right now. But we do have this new tropical storm that is SAM, newly formed today, and it is forecast to become a major hurricane, slow mover. There's still a lot of questions as to where it will go uh, here over the next uh, several days. We'll keep you posted right now. It looks like it is going to stay out of our open waters, but it's been a busy season. Not as busy as last year, but certainly above average. Next name on the list, if we were to get another name, would be Teresa, followed by Victor, and then Wanda. We've almost finished out all the names here this season. There's a look at the temperatures across the country. Pretty comfortable no matter where you go. We're at 80 here in San Antonio. Some hotter weather as you get over towards Phoenix and Las Vegas. 88 degrees right now in Phoenix. But the rest of the country really enjoying some pretty nice weather. 53 Cleveland, 60 in Chicago, 65 up there in Casper, Wyoming. And uh, looking at the uh, satellite radar, the big storm system that kind of pushed the front through much of the country finally starting to move east. There still is some pretty good rain up across the northeast, places like New York City, and then some wraparound showers there in parts of Michigan. But the rest of the country, really pretty quiet. And that includes here in Texas, where we've got a lot of blue skies. 80 degrees at the airport, 84 stints and 80 at Kelly, 80 right now at Randolph. 70s and 80s for the most part uh, here locally. 81 Hondo, 80 out in Tarpley. You're at 82 in Kennedy and 78 currently in Fredericksburg, a place that started off in the 40s this morning thanks to some very, very dry air dew points in the 30s and 40s. These numbers bump up a little bit in the coming days, but not to the point where you'll notice it. The, the air stays dry, humidity stays low. And our forecast today takes us up to 88 for a high. East Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. By 10 o'clock, we'll be down around 70 degrees. And by tomorrow morning, 59 to start your Friday. Another great morning with clear skies. Here's the forecast further down the line, and uh, we'll fast forward here to uh, Saturday. We've got a developing area of low pressure off to the west. High pressure's in control over the weekend. Doesn't really make it all that much uh, warmer, but we'll see quiet conditions. By Monday, though, this storm system starts to pull a little bit closer, draws in some moisture, and I think by Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll be looking at a 
decent chance for rain. At least that's how it uh, looks right now with some scattered showers and storms both Tuesday and Wednesday. Your seven day forecast 89 tomorrow, mostly sunny 89 Saturday, 91 Sunday with low humidity and then humidity comes back Monday and the rain chances kick in. And hopefully with some rain and cloud cover around that will allow temperatures to come down a little more next week. Oh, we do need that rain next week. Thank you. Yep. More Texas Tech, Texas coverage. <laughs> David, I've exhausted all that. Oh, have you really? You're going to talk LSU yeah. now. At least for today. Wow. Yeah. You okay. got your purple tie yeah. on. Yeah. Go Tigers, I guess. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, we're talking to NFL. Why you guys never just look here in the prompter? A, <laughs> Texans host Carolina tonight. Rookie Davis Mills is starting. You guys always You're no this, fun. David. I know I'm not. I'm boring. <laughs> and the bigs, the Astros needed extras last night to take care of the Halos. <laughs> Coming up. Let's see if you're paying attention. <laughs> Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys linebacker Keon O'Neill has gone on the COVID reserve list following close contact protocol. He hasn't tested positive, but since he's not fully vaccinated, he's out. This comes after defensive end Randy Gregory returned off the COVID reserve list and will be able to play against the Eagles on Monday Night Football. In his absence, defensive coordinator Dan Quinn moved first round draft pick Micah Parsons to the D line, with Neil Addo to give Parsons more of an opportunity to show off his ability to play more than one position. Position. Parsons was asked how much of a problem does that create for opposing offensive coordinators? I think that was like one of my biggest things that I was telling, you know, a lot of teams is my versatility being to put on the line, being play linebacker, using my speed and range to really affect the game. And, you know, uh, just keep going forward with it, keep learning every day. And, you know, I got great people to learn after here and great people in the Cowboys community, great linebackers. I got Sean D. Ware always hit me up. So I got a bunch of different people I could contact and get better by. And, you know, to opposing offensive coordinators, just gets them a threat, you know what I mean? Knowing where I'm at on the field, um, determining how they're going to run if they don't know if I'm at D-line or linebacker. So it honestly just gives it more of a threat and more of a game plan, makes them think a little bit more. Parsons was able to pick up a sack in the 20 to 17 victory against the Chargers in LA. When the Houston Texans face the Carolina Panthers tonight at NRG Stadium, Davis Mills will make his first NFL start. That's after the Texans made the former Stanford quarterback their first pick in the third round. Now due to the injury to Tyrod Taylor that could keep him out for four weeks, Mills is now the Texans starter. Offensive lineman Titus Howard is already impressed with the rookie and his pocket presence. When he sits back in the pocket, he's already tall, so he can see everything, and he just delivers. There's one thing I can say about it. He he's not scared to take a hit when he's throwing the ball, and you can you can tell. I think last week, the guy came free. He took the hit, but, you know, he a quarterback. A lot of quarterbacks can't take a hit like that and just get right back up. He got right back up, came back down in that drive, and scored a touchdown. So that just speaks a lot of, of volume to what type of player he is. Kickoff tonight is set for 7:20. Astros at the Angels last night. Astros Bottom of the 10th, tied to five. Bases loaded for the Halos. David Fletcher hits at the right field. Chaz McCormick snags it for out number two. Shohei Otani tags from third. He overruns home plate. So Maldonado tags him out. Thread over. Inning ending. Double play. Top of the 12th, same score. Jake Myers with runners on the corners comes up with an RBI single. The start of a four run inning for Houston and the Astros take it nine to five, reducing their magic number to three for clinching the AL West and the Yankees beat the Rangers seven to three as the pinstripes chase a wild card spot. And just so everyone knows, it's all love. You know, I was just messing with you guys. I know. Oh, about yeah. the prompter? Yeah, but read the prompter for me. Oh, yeah, come on. Tomorrow. <laughs> we promise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. We won't talk any college sports. <laughs> but you got to be careful on what you put in the prompter. Though. I know. <laughs> SA Live is getting geared up at Market Square right now. <laughs> yes, we are. I mean, it's time to give back in a big way, but it is also a thirsty Thursday with some fall flavors. Yep, but we are first talking about the Big Give and so many great organizations, and one of them, Brackenridge Park, and that's where Jen is right now. How you doing, Jen? That's right, we're here. What a beautiful day to be at Brackenridge Park, and it's also part of the Big Give, so you can donate to the Brackenridge Park Conservancy, but they're also gearing up for Parktoberfest. That includes music, dancing, and of course, some beer, too. Check this out. We're going to give you a preview of that coming up. 
And we are talking tea and not just your regular old uh, tea bags here. We are enjoying some refreshing fall flavors from local company Tinas. And Vanessa Sanchez, who is the tea queen of SA. So we've got one that's kind of healthy, but long leaf tea, something special about that, right? It's not like your regular tea bag. Yeah, long leaf tea, whole leaf teas, you can see I suggested like two to three, sometimes even four times. Um, yeah, to really get a good use out of it. So, so. not just one, oh, this already smells really good. We are talking about this and all these wonderful teas that you can get. And then that raises the question, tea or coffee? <laughs> hmm. Oh, that is polarizing, Mike. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You got to let us know at SA Live Case Out on Facebook and Twitter and we'll see how that shakes down in the show. All right, fall is in the air. Fall wardrobe, but what about your hair? Well, we have got some of the latest hairstyles and an easy way to do it. You've seen this before. It is the Pony-O. <laughs> all right, all that more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.